Hi everyone, I'm just going to talk you through a few simple procedures to keep on top of your dog's grooming. Um, if, as the weather warms up, you might be a bit concerned that the dog's getting a bit warm, so show you how to thin out the hair a bit, keep on top of the hair growth around the eyes, um, and have a look at nail clipping all using our willing model here, Archie, aka the four-legged foodie. So if we first of all just take a look at the basic equipment you might require, all of which can be found on Amazon through various suppliers. Um, so starting here, these are just a pair of grooming scissors. These are actually curved scissors, so they're really good for going round feet. The next one is what we're going to be using most today, they're thinning scissors. Um, self-explanatory a comb this is called a stripping knife not as uh, scary as it sounds um, so we'll demonstrate on that on Archie because he's got a coat that requires stripping and these are a pair of nail clippers so if we start with the stripping Archie has a coat that requires stripping um, so Norfolk Terriers Border Terriers most wirehaired breeds um, are usually stripped. And what that means is you just literally pull the hair out. This blade, as it's called, is, is not sharp. It can't hurt the dog, um, but it actually just helps you. Some groomers, professional groomers, can do it just by hand. This just helps you thin out the hair. So all you're basically doing, if you've got a dog with this sort of coat, is just gripping it between the thumb and the blade and tugging and it doesn't hurt the dog. All the hair that's coming out is dead hair. It's not attached to their skin. So you're not actually plucking hair from their skin. You're actually just taking off a top layer of dead hair and it really just thins it out and stops them from being too hot in this nice weather. And you can do that all over where, wherever you can, even down the legs. We don't normally do too much of this on the face. We'd normally, we'd normally tidy that up with scissors. You can see just how much hair is coming out just from that little bit. And we've got plenty of time at the moment. We can all take all day and not force the dog to be going through this for hours on end and just do a little bit at a time each day. One of the main things for your benefit is to try and get the dogs up high so you're not breaking your back bending over doing this at the same time so now we're just going to have a quick look at, at tidying up around the eyes and their paws um, a lot of dogs get a lot of hair growth in front of their eyes arches isn't too bad at the moment but we'll give you a demo on it um, and then obviously if it grows too long they can't see and it's a bit uncomfortable and it makes it more difficult to keep their eyes clean as well if there's a lot of hair there if you're confident with scissors, you can trim the top part by just combing it down like that. That's using the curved scissors that I showed you earlier. But do only please do this if you're confident and the dog is still, because you don't want to end up with any accidents with sharp scissors around eyes. So you can, that's a way of sort of trimming their fringe. But this is a bit more of a safe method for everyone just to keep this hair around and that's those thinning scissors again because they are blunt on the edges and they've got that nice flat blade at one side that you can actually put right on the dog's face without any danger of cutting them and then you can just take that little bit of hair there same as we did on the body a moment ago just snip away until that all comes away nicely there and it leaves that area nice and clean and then if there's any tear stains you can sort those out as well. With the feet, it's using those curved scissors again and again. Please only do this if you feel quite confident. It's not essential that the dogs have short feet um, until you can get back to a groomer's, but if it's causing them any sort of problems and maybe they're, they're licking around there a lot, you can do this. So what you need to do is make sure they're on a flat surface. Let's try and do it without getting my hand in the way and get the hair combed out. If the dog, as most will do, has a tendency to lift the paw up out the way, if you lift the other paw, they have no option but to keep that paw down. And then you can just carefully snip around that excess hair that's flowing onto the table. And that when you're out on your one walk a day, will be flowing into the grass. That 
is basically what I'd recommend just for you to do at home without getting involved in anything that might cause any injury. Just a little quick tidy up around the feet. Now, if you're doing some pavement walking, which some of us might be doing more of at the moment, that is a good way of them naturally wearing down their nails. Otherwise, you can use these special doggy pet nail clippers. Dogs tend to have a mixture of black um, or white nails. Some have some of, of each. Arches are all black and they're the most difficult to do. With a white nail, you'll be able to see as you come to the end it'll be pink towards a certain point and then just white. That pink is blood, is a blood flow. So you don't want to cut into that pink. With a black nail, it's a lot more difficult because you can't see the pink. So with a white nail, you just take off the end before you get to any pink. And I would just really err on the side, side of caution. It does hurt if you get into the, past the quick and it does bleed a lot and it will scare you. So only do this again if you're super confident and you think it's causing some sort of discomfort to the dog to have a long nail. With the black ones, I would just advise just doing a tiny little bit at a time. Sometimes if you take the, clipper, the nail clippers and just squeeze without clipping, if the dog really severely reacts, you know you've got to a point already where you shouldn't be clipping. And so you can just go, no, I'm not going to do that. That's, that's too risky. The one nails that don't ever touch the ground, so don't get worn down naturally, are these dew claws. Not all dogs have them. Some dogs have them on the front and the back. Um, so these are the ones that can cause the problem because if they get too long, they actually start to grow, curl round and start to stick into the dog's paw. So these are the ones that you'd really need to keep an eye on. And, and if you can, give them a clip. Again, same thing. Just take a little bit. This is one thing that Arch is not particularly keen on, as you can see. And this is where you have to be really careful and maybe get someone to help you hold the dog because if they pull away at this point when you're trying to clip the nail, you're in trouble. So you just take a tiny little bit at a time. There you go, like that. And last but not least, after all this, just make sure your dog gets the treats he deserves for being a nice willing model. Now she's going to have a little bit of egg guard jerky to say thank you.